Several times a day, the phone rings at our company with people calling to discuss their career issues. We get about 10 times as many emails each day from people writing in about their career problems. By phone or by email, they always start with something like this. I need to explain my story and it's pretty complex. And yet, here is what all of these people have in common. First, they are experiencing a crisis of confidence. Second, they are frustrated and unhappy. Third, each has a detailed account of what has led to his or her current situation. And four, each is making the same false assumption about his or her situation. It's not rocket science and you shouldn't treat it that way. A few years ago, we started studying and working with people who felt unsatisfied in their careers. So we decided to build an advisory support system for people to find greater career direction and satisfaction. To do that, we realized that we needed to be able to diagnose each person's situation so that a plan, a right plan could be put in place. To the untrained ear, it might sound as if some people have a highly complex career problem on their hands. But after listening to a large quantity of career stories, we noticed that they all fall into three or four categories. No matter how complex the circumstances were surrounding a particular career problem, it still boiled down to one of these three to four major challenges. The first is a career setback. They have been fired, laid off, demoted, put on a performance plan, or they are experiencing a stretch of unemployment. The second is they lack career direction. They have a job, maybe they had several jobs in the past, but each one has them feeling underutilized, uninspired, and unappreciated. Unfortunately, they can't seem to find something that brings them the satisfaction. They have learned what they don't want in a job, but they have no idea or confidence on how to choose what they should do next. Three, there is a desire to change direction. They have been in a career for a while and they think that it is high time to change professions. They want to transition into a new industry or use a different skill set but they can't figure out how and they aren't in a position to start completely over. And four, they're anxious to accelerate. They have a job that they like and a career path in view but they aren't moving forward at the pace that they want. They are struggling to navigate the path to getting more of what they desire and, and they are getting impatient. Honestly, it's that simple. Yet too many people are failing to fix their career problems or issues because they are convinced themselves that their situation is too complex. Why? Because they tried fixing it on their own but failed. Thus, it's easier to assume the problem is highly difficult to solve than to recognize that not having the right advice, the right strategy and the right resources might be the real reason they aren't succeeding. Are you also dissatisfied with your career in some or the other way? I would like to encourage you to clear out the long complicated story that you are playing in your head, analyze the facts and then ask yourself, which one of these is my true issue? Humans love to make things harder than they actually have to be. So give yourself a break and simplify your problems. And then look for specific resources that address your issues. The more you study the problem, the easier it will become to determine a game plan that you can implement to solve it. The modern day executive is bogged down by various problems that hamper their career growth. From work overload to favoritism in the team to getting a good salary hike and switching to a better job, each issue requires a well thought out strategy. 
We will take a look at some of the career related problems in this video that you might be dealing with and I would like to offer some effective solutions for the same. But first take a moment to please like this video so that it stays with you as your future reference and also subscribe to my channel to continue accessing content that will help you to grow, succeed and find direction and solutions to your business, career or life issues. When should you make a job change? It is always advisable to have a clear cut reason for switching jobs. For example, quitting a job on the grounds of not getting well along with your colleagues or lack of job satisfaction are not the very best of reasons. If you feel that your issues can be resolved with some counseling, then you can put your decisions to quit on hold. It's important to note that switching jobs only on the basis of a better remuneration package is not enough. The learning and experience at your job are things of value that you can't and you shouldn't ignore. However, if you feel that the work you do has become monotonous and you feel that your potential is not being utilized properly and that your career growth has stopped, it's high time that you look out. Managing work overload. Overload can lead to excessive stress at the workplace. So a professional needs to delegate responsibility, manage time efficiently, plan the work and strike a work-life balance. And that's why the ability to work well with teams and people is an important skill to learn and hone up. It's important for a professional, particularly in a leadership role, to suitably delegate work. Overload can also be avoided to a great extent with effective time management. The ability to decide which task is important immediately and what can be done later is crucial in managing your workload. People should be able to strike a balance between their work and personal life. This will not only enhance productivity but also help avoid excessive stress. It is important for every professional to be able to align proficiency with their aspirations and then one can derive the joy out of their work. What to do if you got a pay cut? The first thing that you need to do is do not panic. In a calm and objective manner, it is important to understand why you got that pay cut maybe after your performance appraisal. Instead of taking that impulsive step of quitting, it is better to understand the rationale. Try and understand if there is an unspoken signal to move out. Discuss with your manager and the HR the real cause of this pay cut. Is it due to a role mismatch or because the organization is going through a rough patch? It is also advisable to be proactively aware of how your function and how your organization is performing so as to avoid facing unexpected shocks. Usually organizations give a heads up when the pay cuts are going to be exercised for some reason. Is your job role different than what was promised? Such instances mostly occur at junior or mid-management levels due to gaps in probing further at a job interview or your desperation to accept an opportunity. But for the affected employee, it could be a nightmare. And one way to deal with the situation is to take the matter to the people above those who actually hired you. And another is to see what can be done to make the job role richer or more interesting. You could also explore the option of an internal job transfer. However, if you were deliberately misled, you may like to explore your legal options as a last resort. How to ask for a pay hike? With the increase in downsizing within various companies, there is an escalating feeling of job insecurity among employees where they fear that asking for a pay rise could somehow work against them and may even cost them their jobs. That, however, is not true in all situations. If you truly enjoy your work and are also contributing substantially, 
why make life harder by job hopping to increase your salary so it makes sense to do your homework well in advance on what the market is paying for your position in a tough job market it's crucial to stay focused on your performance and measurable results prepare your case and put together the details on why you want a pay raise you must prove to your superiors that you are worth that money play to your strengths while negotiating your appraisal if you cannot negotiate a better salary a suggestion would be to focus on other non cash benefits that that could increase your overall pay package and if nothing seems to work for you look for another job and negotiate your salary well with your future employer how to keep your job search confidential it can sound like a daunting task in a closed knit world but with a little caution you can do this never use office computers telephones and mails for job search it's a small world at a senior level and in many sectors everyone knows everyone a reputable consultant will keep your identity anonymous if providing references is inevitable before an offer one should refrain from mentioning their current colleagues and peers how to manage the high competition in your team in an increasingly competitive work environment one is bound to come across peers who want to stay ahead of the curve at all costs it is great to be ambitious but an excess of ambition could be troublesome for some professionals and people around them one way to deal with with this situation is to understand why your peers are behaving in this way that they are doing However, as long as one's work is not going unnoticed, one does not have to deal with overambitious colleagues. If your colleagues tend to take the credit for all the work done, make sure that you document the task related conversations to the extent of clarifying who has done which task. If your overambitious colleague is constantly stepping on your toes and getting away with it, try and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation stating your discomfort if they continue discuss the issue with your manager or with hr how to manage a layoff getting laid off and not knowing what to put in your resume it's best to be honest most people within a certain industry are aware which company has had layoffs Not being honest makes the new employer think that you are not confident about your work. Develop a contingency fund, a 3 months reserve and second get yourself a health insurance. It's a good time to introspect about areas in which you find yourself lacking. This is not the time to get low or ask why me. That's not going to solve your problem. instead analyze the feedback you have received from your employer jot down the reasons for the layoff life isn't over be objective and self appraise without going to self blame use this period to go out and make new connections and improve your skill sets hope you found this video useful are you facing a career problem for which you're seeking advice or help Then ask me in the comment section of this video or write to us at info@mascothedge.com. At Please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we regularly post content to help you grow, succeed and find direction and solutions to your business, career and life issues. Thanks for watching.